My name is Bill Wood, and this week's topic is going to be contraction. That's right, we're going to get the bad news out of the way first, and we're going to talk about the recent contraction in the U.S. plastics industry. For this, I have created a graph it's based on data that's compiled and reported by the Federal Reserve Board, and it's the Industrial Production Index for Plastics Products in the U.S. And just a, a couple of words about how to interpret this data. It's an index based on the average month in 2017 equaling 100. So anytime the uh, line falls below 100, you're uh, producing less than the average month in 2017. Uh, it's basically a, an, in, a, an index that measures volume of output. It's not pricing. It's not value. So there are no dollars here. So this is volume. It's seasonally adjusted. And I mentioned we're talking about a contraction. I think it's pretty obvious from the chart over the past year, nine months at least, uh, the plastics industry output in the US has been trending down. And this is a rather severe contraction by historical standards. After hitting a cyclical, cyclical peak, it's easy for me to say, last year, uh, around 106 or so, it has uh, mostly steadily declined throughout uh, this year, and it's down to about 98. So that's uh, six or seven percent decline over that period of time, uh, which is is pretty volatile, pretty pretty severe for the plastics industry. So before I start to anticipate what I think is going to happen in for the rest of this year, say in the fourth quarter and then possibly beyond, I need to understand what's going on right now. And are there any other uh, indicators or data trends that suggest to me why plastics is uh, in such a state of decline? One of my favorite indicators is housing starts. That is representative of activity in the U.S. construction market, residential construction, and it's pretty clear that uh, this data is also down. It's down even more than the plastics data. For the year-to-date, total number of housing starts is down about 13%. Now, housing starts obviously represent construction activity, which is a major end market for plastics products. But housing starts is also a good indicator of overall uh, U.S. consumer activity. In other words, when it's a good time to build a new house, it's a good time to buy a lot of other types of products, all of which have plastics in them. Um, this is data set's going to be more volatile uh, than plastics because it's very interest rate sensitive. And that's another indicator that uh, is important here, interest rates. And if you look at the data on interest rates, particularly the data for the yield on the 10-year Treasury note, not the Fed funds rate, which we've all heard about, which is an important indicator, but the market uh, indicator is the 10-year Treasury note. Uh, it's the favorite market indicator, that is. And that's currently rising rapidly. It's about 4.5% interest right now, but it's uh, in a very strong uptrend. And the uptrend really got started in interest rates about the same time that the downtrend in housing starts and plastics started. And that was last year when the 10-year uh, Treasury note yield hit 3% or so. Now, at the time it hit 3%, the, the pace of inflation uh, was higher than that. So that's a, that's a negative real interest rate. So it didn't look like it was going to be uh, that significant. But as we know, the pace of inflation started to come down pretty substantially about that time, and the interest rates continued to go up. So we hit a point in the second half of last year where uh, it's, it started to uh, impinge on, on housing demand and also on plastics. So that, that moment of inflection occurred. Now, uh, I think it's safe to say that interest rates are uh, real interest rates, in other words, when they're adjusted for inflation, are positive. And the uh, housing data has not uh, performed very well under those circumstances so far, and neither has the plastics data, which is a little bit surprising. And I have another hypothesis uh, for that that I will share in just a second. Um, but what does this mean for the next quarter, two quarters? 
I am not sure the interest rates have peaked. They have not yet hit a, 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 anything that looks like the top of the trend. It might be at the top right at this very second, but it's not clear to me that that's what's happened. I'm not sure that housing starts data has hit a bottom. It looks like it's uh, starting to come in for a little bit of a bottom. Um, but again, I need more time to figure that out. And the plastics data clearly has not registered any type of a bottom. Look like I might be putting in a cyclical bottom uh, in the spring of this year, but the last couple months it's turned down fairly significantly. So the fourth quarter, I would say, is a, is a time where we hope we hit cyclical bottoms in the, uh, in the housing starts data, the plastics data, and a cyclical peak in uh, yield on the 10-year notes. Uh, and I presume, given the recent uh, amount of data, the Fed is done hiking. So now we just have to let the market determine uh, what the right level for interest rate on the 10-year note is and see if we can get a peak there. I'm hoping that will happen in the fourth quarter. There is no good news to report until that those things happen. And I will look at that every month and be happy to get back to you uh, on a fairly frequent basis um, because those are important indicators. So interest rates, housing starts, and, uh, and, and then plastics will follow, I believe. And at the same time, we need consumer spending to register a bottom. There's a very good chance that the fourth quarter is going to show a negative number in uh, consumer spending when adjusted for inflation. That's not a prediction. It's just the possibility that consumer spending is slowing uh, decelerating quite rapidly now. And so that too uh, has the possibility of, uh, of being a, a headwind and a challenge for, for plastics products and the plastics market going forward. I'm hopeful that after the turn of the year, all of these things have established bottoms, set up a base and that can then start to recover. Like I said, I think there's a bigger reason, face, a bigger challenge facing the plastics industry because uh, I would never have expected it to, to contract this much, this quickly, under normal circumstances. And so I think there's a longer term um, force at play here, and that is market deselection. And especially in the packaging uh, segment, but in, in some other segments of, as well, I think I'm starting to sense that that's having an impact on the data uh, for plastics products right now. Now, going forward, that's a big challenge. Um, but I think when I look forward, the prospects for the plastics industry are bright. It's going to take a lot of work. Uh, we have to uh, redesign, rebrand. In other words, I think reinvent large segments of the plastics industry. And that's going to be uh, a lot of effort and take some time. But I think that the path to the future, the path that is to a sustainable, prosperous, healthy, circular future that checks all the boxes, that meets people's needs, uh, reduces weight and waste, improves productivity. I think the bridge to that future is built largely out of plastic. It's just that we need to get control of the uh, type of plastic, the design of plastics products. Like I say, a reinvention of the entire uh, industry in many segments. These videos are my small contribution to that longer term effort where month by month, data point by data point, I select out the things that I think are going right, the things are going wrong and report them to you. And hopefully you find this helpful and uh, be sure you, you get back to me uh, if you have any questions or comments. Um, I, down below and uh, look forward to speaking to you in the future. Thank you for joining me on this journey.